Okay, so next up, let me talk you through the channel module of the SSL Duality. We've got the input gain on the very top, no big surprise, it's got a full, uh, fair bit of gain. Just realize that when it's all the way down, it already boosts the signal by 15. Uh, the high Z is probably not very useful in most situations. Uh, phantom power is indicated over here. However, the only way to activate phantom power is to first select the channel and activate phantom power from here. I would strongly advise against turning on phantom power everywhere, but only on the signals where you want it. We have a pad control, uh, which I engage if the incoming signal is too loud, even with the gain down. You can have that with loud signals like condensers in a kick drum. Uh, this console has an interesting feature, which is called a drive, and that turns the input from a clean circuit into a driven circuit or filthy if you want to call it so. In that stage, you can, in that case, you can choose uh, the ratio between second and third order harmonics. And the drive is then set by the amount of input gain against the, the trim. So the trim down and input hot means a lot of drive. The input down and the trim up means a little bit of drive. And if you want to go back to perfectly clean, you turn this switch off. Then we have a compressor section, which works exactly as it does in the SSLK. So first up, we have the ratio. You can also engage the peak mode. Uh, otherwise, it will be in RMS mode simply by pressing the ratio. Then we have the release control, uh, which is also a press button at the same time. You push it for fast attack, so when this light is on, you have a fast attack. So fast or slow attack is all you have. It's probably also all you need. Then we've got the threshold, no extras hidden over here. Now we follow up with the expander gate control, where we have got the range on the top. That's the amount of attenuation, so if you leave it at zero, it won't do a thing. 40 is the max it can do, which is great for gating toms and drums. It's usually not enough to, uh, uh, to gate sine waves added to a kick and things like this. Anyway, that's another story. We've got the threshold over here, we've got the release, and yet again on the release we have a hidden fast attack press button. And on the range control we have a hidden feature which is, can we see the light? Ah, oh, that's not really showing too well. So this green light over there, not sure if it comes through on the video. Here, the expander light comes on, and that's a choice of expander or gate. Then we have our filters on the top, a high pass filter and, sorry, a, <laughs> a low pass filter and a high pass filter. So we can take them out of the circuit by switch turning it to the out position. Um, then we have the 4 band EQ. Red on the top is the high shelf with a gain and a frequency. We have two parametric mids. The fully parametric with gain, frequency, and Q. And right there in black again, the low shelf control with frequency and gain. And both shelves also have a bell feature if you want to turn the shelves into a bell. No big surprise over here. Our aux and controls. Just be, in, be aware that the stereo Q is pre fader uh, and the Mono aux sends are post fader unless configured otherwise. We have the source select where we can choose where it's sourced from. Usually that's from the fader. You can also choose odd even effects or the channel output. Right here at the bottom is the surround panning control. If you're in stereo mount, left, right, this one is all you would want to do. The other ones are only useful if you mix um, through the channel faders in surround which is probably not very likely to happen. Anyway, it's all there.